We have only five points to cover. Five. So we are beginning. This is the thumb finger. And when you look at this thumb finger, it is the closest to the owner, right? This is English Bombardi. It is the closest to the owner, and it is the biggest anyway. Not necessarily the tallest, it's the biggest. It's separated from the rest. There is a gap there. I'm giving you the attributes of this thumb finger. Uh, in civilized societies, this, in most cases, is used for identification. Identity. It carries most of our identities. Like our grandmothers and our, our parents, maybe if they did not go through school well, when they are doing some transactions, if they cannot append their signatures, they are requested to use the thumb, at least to show that authority of identity. So it carries our identities. This is the only finger with the ability to touch other fingers freely. There is no another finger which can do that. You can demonstrate, because everyone has a, a hand. There is no another finger which touches other fingers. It is the only one with the ability to flexibly touch other fingers. Uh, those people who went through education, uh, especially on sciences, you realize that the wild animals use this finger for survival. They call it the opposable thumb. Without it, if you cut it, some animals cannot survive because they use it for landing and taking off. And at times, like monkeys, they use this finger in hanging on those branches and swinging around. If you cut it, you have done away with their lives. Very foundational, this finger. Very foundational even in life. These are our parents. This finger represents our parents, especially the mother, Mama Muzazi. I said it's closest to the owner. Our parents are closest to us. I say it is the only one which touches other fingers freely. And in life it's just like that. Parents, parental care, parental love, Everything we get from parents affects other facets of life, affects other faces of life. When you talk of the identity, if we can ask about yourself, if, if we cannot understand you fully, you will take us back to your mother or to your father. The family name, identity. And in most cases, we take our characters from our parents. We take our identity. Much percentage of our identity is borrowed richly from our parents. Hallelujah. Amen. I have said this finger is very foundational and it represents a very foundational facet of life of parents which we cannot wish away just like that. I'm speaking to young people. There is something we need to do to our parents at any given at any given, at any given level. Uh, somebody say your mother is. They say mothers are as happy as their saddest children. So if there is a sad child in any given family, that sad child affects any mother. So your mother is as happy as you are sad. If you lead a sad life, it goes without saying, your mother is leading a sad life. So it's good for us, if possible, to lead such lives that can bring hope and happiness to our parents, especially our mothers. I'm stressing on the mother because in most cases, people who are affected are the mothers. Young people currently, as we speak, who are leading wayward life, affect their mothers. At times, fathers may not be affected as such, but the mother is the most affected when it happens like that. You are as stupid as 
your mother, but you are as wise as your father. In a way, they, they kind of relate stupidity and negative things to their mother. But those are the bright side of life is attributed to their father. Is it true? Some are saying yes. Some are saying no. Mothers inside here, your children, if your children are, are, are fools, should they be attributed to you? Hey. Somebody to read the book of Proverbs, chapter, chapter 10, verse 1. Maybe we can prove that. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 1. We are almost done with the first finger. I said we have five points to make uh, this uh, afternoon. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 1. The Bible says, A wise son makes a glad father. A wise son makes a glad father. Uh -huh. But a foolish son is the grief of his mother. <laughs> but a foolish son is grief to who? So wise son is attributed to the father. Foolish one, you are not you, you are mama. So you are, I want to stamp authority on that statement that you are as stupid as your mother. Why? I say this finger is very foundational and we are attributing it immensely to the man. So our lives are founded, our, let me put it this way, and even generation. The foundational moral principles are set by mothers. And given generation, the foundational moral principles are founded by the mothers. So if your mother is careless, chances are you will become careless. If your mother is organized, chances are you will be organized. It goes without saying. That's why when the Bible says when a child is foolish, the person who is grieved is the mother because this is the first teacher of this child. So if the mother, if the child is not making it in life, the mother takes the blame. Many parents, as we speak, are suffering even from chronic diseases because of their children. Sadly so, many parents, as we speak, if you go to their tombs, if you go to where they are buried, if at all it was recorded what killed them, you realize they died because of stress from their children. Parents, especially mothers. On the flip side, many families as we speak are living very good lives than before because of children. There, are, there is a case saying, they say, Abana Bagarate Omokungu Omonyaka Akarukwa Entingana. That children qualified a harlot to be called a queen. Hallelujah. So, children, if children are taken care of well, they can become a blessing to their parents at any given there was a family in town of uh, our age. Our family was a family of our age. Our family was So they brought over their father to town. And as they kept on living there, they realized, Uyu, Mze, there were some things he was doing which were not working well with them. You understand the setting of town. Flaws are, if they are not tired, there is something done on them. Uh, the, most of the tables we use in town are glass, glassy, glassy. And most of the utensils we use are enamel, enamel, glassy, glassy. So if it falls from the table, <laughs> Sorry. In Abunjika. And in most cases, we don't use our, bear, uh, our, our hands in eating. We use. We scoop food. We don't. 
with cooked food. Eh? So this father ni warisaba. When he was brought over to town, alipokuwa na namnajua chakula cha town si ugali ugali ni mchele mchele marawe marawe ni chapo chapo. That, that, that is that is the trend. So when he was brought to town, akipewa mchele mchele marawe marawe na ibo vijiko vijiko when he is feeding and he's trembling you understand with the age that is uh, automatic so they realize that kuna vunja sana sahani meza ina vunjwa alafu kule chini lazima michele imwagike mwagike kabisa because of that process so they came up with a, a method maybe to cap that and uh, minimize maybe the loss wakamjengea kameza kambao kamletea sahani ya plastic TV na kikombe hizo hata ikianguka ipasuke na mnaelewa hivyo vijiko alafu akamweka sehemu yake kana and they realize that is right because they wanted to minimize the loss one day they realize do baba kula machozi na mdondoko they didn't know the reason but they were concerned but they gave it some time maybe ni uze they gave it some time at least maybe with the time you know there are, there are some things which heal with the time uh, one day when they are coming home mtoto wao wako hapo kwa veranda wakagundua ameenda akachukua vibao anachonga chonga vitu kwa veranda so babake dadia anapokuja anamuuliza what are you doing unafanya nini ya hii hii na inayo ndani hapa ni nini anachonga chonga mbao Nipo yule mtoto akamwambia I am making a table when you will be old now weta kuwekea kando huko unakulia huko kama nani kama babu anapokula huko God of turn around it took the child to train the parents that what they were doing to this old man was wrong and that message sank it sank to them in fact while the pastor ile meza they and then and they brought back them there to the dining table na yale machozi yaka katika that is how at times we become gases to our parents let me make a very strong statement if i'm now speaking to associates if your parents are still using the bread and the bedding which you are born in your bath was not as impactful as it was meant to be unisikia kweli kama baba yako na mama yako tunapozungumza hapa associates kama wanatumia kitanda na malazi yale vitambaa na planget ambazo ukifuata vizuri ulizaliwa ulizaliwa juu ya hicho kitanda ulizaliwa kwa hizo planget kuzaliwa kwa was not rather is not as impactful as it should the best reward we can give to this first finger is basic achievement basic achievement mtoto akizaliwa analia basic achievement anaenda class 1 anaenda high school anaenda college akimaliza anapata kazi labda anaingia ana anaanza familia basic achievement that is the only thing we can give to our parents and when we have achieved we share some portion of this achievement to our parents and that way we will be blessed in Jesus name in most cases when people show you this finger all is well with them mtu akikuonyesha hivi mambo ni mazuri when your parents wish you well it will be well with you when your parents wish you well mimi ndio hata banga tata so what acha kuna kwa roho when your parents wish you well it will be well with you the opposite is true but because we are called by God's name we should engage the post of gear finger number 2 it's the second finger in the human 
hand, but some people believe it is fast because they call it the four finger. That is called the pointing finger, the index finger. Those are the names attributed to this finger. And I guess it is the only finger with many names. Here is a reason. This is the most active finger in the human hand. The most active finger. This is the most skillful finger in the human hand. It is the most skillful, the most active. It is the cleverest finger. Listen. Cleverest finger. It is very active than any other finger. You get something out of your nostrils? This one. It represents, it represents teachers. This one. Teachers. But if I go to Zema Miri, no Bokorogoto, they are. So even when we have this associate support, at times we cannot miss to tag along our lecturers. They were mentioned somewhere. We need them. Teachers, right from foundational level, even to the apex. Teachers, very important in our lives. So when you graduate from your parents, you meet the teacher. And as I said, this is where the moral fabric is sealed. Because I said parents set the foundational moral standards of any given generation. Now here is where we have the ceiling. This is where the intelligence of any given generation is set. So as we say, you are as stupid as your mother, you will be wise as your teacher. Teacher. So the father is in between here. Your intelligence depends on who you met when you started schooling right from nursing school. Intelligence. And it is attributed to your teachers on purpose. You cannot run away from it, teachers. So when we become parents, at times it's good you speak well about teachers of your children. Because by so doing, you are safeguarding your children. Let me use an example. Uh, Elder Siago. Elder Siago is my teacher. He was my lecturer at Kisi University. So by extension, I'm also an associate here. Elder Siago, maybe he has a kid. We have taught Amanda Shule, primary. I love him, I'm one plus one goes to level. I love him, I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to go to the next one. Angaria pata yu mtota meandeka vibaya. Alafa anza kumambia it's not 11, it is 2. You see the level of elder is up there. Yule mwalimu wa pipi wan labda ikoko chini. Toto atasema. Teacher said it is 11 and it remains. So even if you start explaining to this child that your teacher is a bit stupid than me, just get what I'm saying because I can even prove it. The child will remain and say, teacher, say, if you want to correct this child, you will correct the child through the teacher. So if you are speaking negatively about this teacher, then you are twatting. You are in a way twatting the growth of your child. This finger. And in most cases, when we are given direction in life, this is the finger which is used, and our teachers. If we are directionless in life, it's because maybe we didn't hear what the teacher was saying, or the teacher ignored giving that direction. So if we are well directed, the blame, if we are well directed, the credit should go to the teacher. Are we together? Yes. I want to move to the third thing. I'll dwell on the third and the fourth finger. I'll take a few minutes on the two. Here, I'm wish you a When you look at this finger, the middle finger is the tallest, and it is right at the center. Are we there? 
it is the tallest, it is right at the center. We say this represents the parents, this represents teachers. Now, the, the middle finger, because you are a church, the middle finger is seen like that cross of Jesus. You know, Jesus was, the, the cross of Jesus was at the center. Ya muizi hii side, ya muizi mingine hii side Ya hake kakua katikati And it was a bit elevated That is the middle finger Then this finger is a bit visionary Than this other fingers because of its height It sees further than these other fingers This middle finger represents the clutch This is where we have the church elders This is where we have the pastors This is where we have the bishops This is where we have the spiritual leaders, the middle finger. And these three groups are so crucial in any person's life. Shika kalami yako, shika tuwa takama huu, au kona yo, shika, shika, shika. Pretend you are laughing, pretend you are holding your, your pen. Ni vidonda vingapi vina tumika? The first three, parents, teacher, and clergy. Nana watu wakikaribia kufanya mtiani, nani anaitu wenda kuomba? Pastor. Pastor. Mwadua mfanya kazi yake? Mzazi, ametua school fees. Very vital in any person is right. These three, parent, teacher, and the clergy. But, I, I, I want to believe you will understand. When you, talk, when you talk about the signage of the first finger, it's well understood and it is very positive. When you talk about the signage of the second finger, post you. But we can work at all. We are going to think it's a We So it is a post you. But when we come to the middle finger, it's signage. What is that? We talk about the signature. It is not just a ticket. I am not saying it. I am not saying it. When somebody shows you the middle finger. Is that an applause? Is it? What is that? Matusi ya kilo. Si matusi raisi. It's a middle finger. It is a mother country's. You can be taken to court. Na mtu wa sana alinyonyesha. Kitonza katikati. Matusi. But we have said the middle finger represents the clergy. That goes without saying that the most abused office in this human life is the office of the clergy the middle finger and people who are going to school in most cases abuse this office intentionally the office of the clergy until uh, you, you see let me use my lecture uh, we are in town Now, you will not answer, you will answer me. I, I have met my lecturer in town, and then I address him. How are you, elder? And then, the other day, I'll meet him and address him. How are you, lecturer? Which one sounds strong? Gandhi? Lecture. It feels good. Now, some other day, the church elder was found, pumped down. Which one will sing? Which one will make more, we will make more news? Then they are. Lecturer, church elder. The most abused office. This one. This one. And because of this setting, allow me to say, any person with the prefix, the man of God, is anointed. Be careful how you handle such any person with the prefix or with a synonym man of God man of God those are the people who occupy this office the clergy be careful how you handle them when you read when you read the book of Deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 1 Moses is addressed as the man of God Moses so Moses He is also known as the man of God. Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 1. You will read. Go back to the book of Numbers, chapter 12. Moses had two siblings, Aaron and 
Miriam. One day, they were clamoring with Moses and they were like, God cannot keep on speaking to Moses alone. He can also speak to us. And they were grieved, kind of. Then the Bible says, God had it. What did he do? He called an emergency meeting. From the meeting of four people. God, Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. Then the Bible says, God asked them, when I speak to people, I speak through visions and dreams. But when I speak to Moses, because he is not an ordinary man, I speak to him face to face. Why can't you hear him? God was annoyed. He didn't wait for the meeting to end. The Bible says God was annoyed. He moved out of the meeting. And when he moved out of the meeting, Miriam became a liver. And she was a leprosy. Just because they went against the man of God, Moses, who was the brother to them. It took the hand of Moses to pray for Miriam to be restored. The man of God. Go to the book of 2 Kings, chapter 7. There is another man of God there by the name Elisha. You know prophet Elisha. There was a time the land of Samaria until those people were eating. By the way, we believe in Asama, Gichwa Cha Punda. Ilikuwa kinauzo siju pesa ngapi? Alafu mavi ya njiwa ilikuwa inauzwa pesa. Because there was serious famine there because the Syrians had besieged the the land of Samaria. Unajua Ukraine na Russia. Sasa Russia ya wakati huo ambayo ilikuwa inaitwa Syria ilizingira Samaria ambayo ni Ukraine ya wakati huo na njaa kali ikaingia until one day yule kiongozi wao wa Israel sasa alipokuwa anapita Mama mmoja alikuwa anapiga nduru na mwambia uokoe. Ndipo yule kinga anamwambia, "How can I save you if God cannot save you?" But at least he was reluctant. Akamwambia, "Eleza, explain to me what happened." And then the mother was like, "We agreed yesterday to kule mtoto wa huyu." Tujamshe tukule. Na tukapatana, tukimaliza kula kesho ambayo ni leo. Ajapo tulisema tukula wangu, tukakula. Leo, ilikuwa tukule wanani? Wani, na hame mficha. So you can, you can imagine how serious was that famine until mothers started eating their sons in turns. Then that Israel king was furious. He was looking for the head of Elisha. But before he went there, the man of God said, tomorrow, such a time like today, there will be plenty food in Israel. That's how it happened. But there was a soldier, there was a, a gentleman who had Elisha, the man of God, speak. And he antagonized the words of the man of God. Where, whereby he said, even if heavens open, nothing like that can happen. And Elisha was like, you will see, but you will not eat. Go and read 2 Kings chapter 7. Verse 1, verse 2, verse 3, and verse 20 to tell you how it came to pass. That man, because he antagonized the word from the man of God, he saw, but he tried, he could not eat that food. Man of God. The same, same militia, go back. I'm speaking about this finger and how this office, the man of God, is abused. Go back. To the second Kings still chapter 2, verse 23. There were sons, there were children. Uh, the Bible says, lads from the city. Abaishia, Uwe Town. Lads from the city. Who saw the man of God, Elisha, parting from Elisha. And as he was moving from Bethany, they were like, bad man, come up, bad man, come up. And when that man of God turned, he spoke a curse upon them. And the two, what? Two bears came from nowhere and killed how many children? 40. Is it 40 or 42? 42 of them. Just because they went against the man of God. We don't have enough time maybe to expand this more. But let me give you the last one. Who is also known as the man of God but we don't know another name. The book of First Kings chapter 13. They call him the man of God from Judah. He was given some message.
to deliver. And when he was delivering the message, there was a king, King Jeroboam. When he heard him speak against the altar, that king was like, When that king stretched his hand against who? The man of God, the hand withered. Mkono kakauka, it will not go back. At this point, let me tell you this. Many people in the church of God have withered because they have stretched their hands against men of God. Even young people. Wameka ukiyo. Si mikono, ata akili. Umu ndako baka. Umu ndako baka keke kusi. Just because he is against the man of God, you become confused in life. You wither. Your mind withers. Currents cannot flow because you wither. Just because you went against the man of God. So if there is anything we need to do, this man of God is giving them total respect. Hallelujah. I'm moving to the last one. Because I said this one is almost in Tachukwa, less than a minute. And this is where our center is. The third, the fourth thing. In it, what? The ring finger. It is the fourth. One, two, three, four. It's the finger number four. I will take some minutes here. This finger is the heaviest, the human hand. This one. It is the most stupid thing. This one. It's the heaviest. It is the dumbest. This one. I can't even say that. Those people, like our musicians here, when you when you take some classes with these uh, piano lessons, kuna walimu wengi na mbawa na kuchapa vidole wakati wana kufundisha. Kama kuna kidole kina chapa sana ni aishik. This one. Aishik. Ama kama una yu, those people, when you operate your keyboards and uh, your keyboard, via laptop, desktops, when you are fingering, when you train your fingers, this is the most, hindi nako sumbua sana, isumbua sana yu, shika. This thing. Maybe still you don't understand that. Let me bring you home. Uh, get get a, flat, a flat place and rest your hand there. A flat, a flat, a flat place, put your a pen, a uh, uh, Tabu, Yalab, Homa, Omeza. Then, now, go with me. The first finger. Second. Third. Fourth. I've seen Jacqueline. <laughs> when you are at the fourth finger, it is the dumbest, the most stupid, this one. This finger represents those people we call at times in the primary school, we went through primary school. Kuna watoto ambao walikuwa na makamasi. Wamapua all through. Una panguza tena na inatoka. It is there all through. Paka anaitwa? Take na mabili. Those children at times who are called even in Meru. Those people we call maringas. Kigia high school, kigia college. Wakat came in Africa. When people are moving from class to the field, ye yanatoka from class to the dormitory. Na hapo na karatas kubwa. Mukifika wakati wa cross country, si kama nyinyi mlikuwa na hivyo vitu kwa shule zetu. Anakuja na paper from the hospital na baina sema I am exempted. And I have resources. If I go running, I will not come back. <laughs> we have such people. These are those people in school. Mwalimu na wambia. Wakati wengine wanaenda kulala, you will extend for like 30 minutes and you will pay. 
For what? Extra what? Tissue. Because they are slow learners. They don't catch up with the rest of the children. They are. Was it? Was it God of turnarounds? Was it? How? There are people even in the society that Akuba. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Anapita kwa shamba la marawe chinge ndo bogo ndo awe toro weta boka ina choma a golden ring in a stupid finger. So when you start calculating the cost or value of this hand or fingers, which one becomes the most expensive? The stupid one. There was a lady who married a young man from a very humble background. They were living in town. In fact, this lady was literally paying for the rent and the basics because Kazi are like general edition. And they was kind of looking for another one. But there are some people who come from real humble backgrounds. This man was one. So they stayed for some time and then it can figure somewhere. This lady was like, no, I don't know. We cannot. We cannot operate like this. And what she did, she packed some few things which belonged to that gentleman. A bag too, and the chest too. So literally that man went out of that house and that woman closed it. And she went. She was like, I'm going to look for my type, my class. You are not my type. You are not my class. And she meant it. So she went. Thank God. She got somebody who was of uh, her type. She got a banker who was earning well, even beyond her. And that man went there 10 years down the line. This lady was a statistician. And she had done something associated with proposal writing. So you the banker who was a uh, husband, there was some business they were doing. One time he came and they was like, we've gotten some opportunity to supply some things, but we lack funds. So because you are acquainted with writing proposals, kindly do a very clean proposal. I will take it to my friend. My boss, I know him, he's a generous man. He can give us a grant. Because they needed like five million. You know a grant, a grant is like a person. You don't, you don't repay. You just report how you used it. And that woman was very excited. She did a very good proposal because that, is, was, that was her head of specialization. And it was taken that boss. After some two weeks, money was wired into their bank account, hallelujah. And they were happy. So after a week, that lady was a sanguine. You know sanguines? She was like, you know, I don't know your friend. Why can't we go to that man? To Mujukulia Talitoke? Because I'm a good idea. He assisted us. Now we have this, we are waiting to deliver those things and then we'll make enough profit to do other things. So let us go to him and say at least, thank you. That man did it. And they planned, they went. So by the time, when I'm going here and that compound, I have told you this lady was a sanguine. She was like, hi, this is a good compound. There is a great house there. And she was speaking to the husband. We cannot manage that house. Kindly, when we get our proceeds from that delivery, let us at least have something like this compound. Because this is what we can manage. We can't manage that compound. And this man was, where is so and so? Where is the boss? That woman was like, he's upstairs. Go and call him. So the woman went, calling the person they have come for, and the man went to the washrooms. 
He went to the washrooms. The woman is at the sitting room, admiring. And she was kind of calculating what they can manage to do after the afterwards, maybe. Then a man came from the upstairs with a t-shirt. Oversized. And some shorts. Coming with a mug, a glass, the paper juice, and the two glasses. Because I'm they were again, they were weird. This woman was the first one to see the man, and she knew him in his hand. This is that man. So she was like, ah, yes, I was right. I was right. You, I knew. You could amount to nothing. Look, you are now a houseboy in this compound. You are now a houseboy And she was like, now, what's the party you choose? Aka mumiminia, aka pachakwanza, aka kunywa. Alafu akaza kumambia, now wait. My husband has gone to the washrooms. I will introduce him to you. The person I told you is my class. My type. He is coming. He has gone to the washrooms. I knew the best you could be is a houseboy, which you are. And after some two weeks from now, you you will see we will have some compound like this one. Of course, we may not manage this house, but we will have a compound like this one because we won some. You can imagine. And that, that woman was, dumb, that man was dumbfounded. So even before he opened his mouth, the man from the washrooms came. As he comes, he saw some conversations and tension. And he was like, these people know each other. So Anapokuja, Yule Mama Kierere, is like, meet my husband, a banga. A, you can imagine the decorations she was uh, <laughs> accompanying the description with. And the man was like, hey. Me, my boss. This is the man who gave us the five million. And this is the person we have seen. We have come to say thank you. That woman. Went down. The Jews came and went back. I can go to the Sakaf. Psalms 113, verse 7. Psalms 113, verse 7. What does it say? That's our key verse. The Bible says, He raises the poor out of the dust. And lifts the needy out of the harsh heap. We are in God, the friend of the poor. God of turn around. Hallelujah. That is God. God of turn around. Those people we at times disregard. Those are the friends of God. God says, erases the stupid to a shame the wise. He empowers the weaklings to a shame the strong. That is First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. Uko chini uko. He does things which are contrary to human thinking to disapprove their thinking. That is God of turn around. You have seen this. People, even in this Kenyan system, people who score A's become employees. People who score averagely become employers. God of turnarounds. So don't call anybody off just because you find yourself better than them. God turns things around. Don't be used as an example negatively. It's good maybe you use it as an example positively that God has elevated you from a low lying land to an upland because He is a God of turnarounds.
lastly, this little finger. This little finger. It's the least. You know what learns? We say, when we are giving our points, we say, the last but not the least. But today we are saying, it is the last and it is the least. But indeed, it's not least as such. When I was growing up, I was taught to go to Okay. Alright. Those who are not following, okay. Alright. Koiva. Tragua Torin. Yadi. Who started all this? The smallest. And the letter we get a shida. This one, we know you. But there is something dramatic. Uyu, am I nani? Mama Mzazi, am I sema? Maybe Sipo. I am not there. And my friends, if you begin a project, if you begin something, and your mother and your parents say, stop it. We are not part of that. And they do it genuinely. Stop it. If you begin something, and your parents go contrary. Follow them. To the contrary. Samson began something, he said, I've seen a beautiful lady in Timna. And then the parents were like, you, you could not see people here? He said, that is the one I've seen, go and bring her for my wife. He went, he didn't come back. His eyes were gotched out. In fact, he died there. If you begin something in this life and your parents say stop, do what? Stop. This finger represents self. 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 What is self? Nini? Nini? Nafsi. Simply nafsi. 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 Self. Nafsi. This is something little, something small, something least, but it can make the whole ship. To sink. When these fingers are standing at their positions, they look different. But when they come together, in fact, they have different heights. But when they come together, when they are unified, when they come together, they become of the same level. And they make something called a fist. Gumi. Gumi. And if you didn't know, Gumi is the basic defense weapon of any person. If you found an army using grenades, using, uh, using heavy, heavy metals to fight, using those ammunitions, if he uses them and they are done, if he uses every other athlete and it's done, he remains with the basic human weapon, the fist, and he fights to the end. So when the mother, the father, when the child who is, when, when, when the teacher, when the clutch, when the weaklings, and when the self we have is done away with, we come together, we make a unity, basic unity. We become a formidable force against the devil. If we are the church, we become unified. We become one. If we are unified, the Bible says we become one with Christ. Oneness with Christ. When we say one, we mean one. We not become together, but we become one. Unit. One. Not together, but one. We are never defeated by the enemy because Jesus will fight for us and will become victorious in Jesus' name. Amen.